This floor needs quite a bit of work. You can see what we got going on. We got some rot. Probably shouldn't touch that like that. And this project is my dump truck project. It's my first dump truck build. I've never done anything like this and I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just kind of starting it and then figuring it out as we go. And I think you guys will catch on to that pretty quick. I had another F-350 that I got from free up in Gary, Indiana and we've pulled a ton of parts out of that. We got all the parts we want out of it. The rest of it has been scrapped. You're sitting on the dump bed that came off of it that's gonna have to get rebuilt. Part of what came out of that is some good floor material and that's what we're gonna try to do. Make a floor that's a little bit less ventilated. I mean, the weight reduction is gonna be great for fuel but I'm more worried about staying in the cab than anything. I think step one is going to be getting the rest of all of this stuff out of here. What do we got here? Hardy's? Nice. Looks like the fella kept an extra can of satin olive just in case he needed a touch up on the go. That's, that's good thinking. Used all of it. Somebody asked about my bolt organization. It's pretty simple. I just throw everything in this box and I remember exactly where they all go and what they do. Yep. Foolproof. little channel here just kind of turned into a little dirt trap. I wonder it rusts out so bad right there. I'm sure it was a channel under the trim so they could run wires and whatnot. But look at this. I think I'm going to just chip at this stuff. If it's loose, we'll pop it up. If it seems like it's solid, I guess we'll leave it. I just don't want anything like there hiding underneath it. You know how when you're looking for an easier way to do something and then you got an old junk China SDS bit laying around and then an old wood chisel so you just weld the two together to kind of peel this stuff off a little easier? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Well that's what we're doing. Full face mask because I think this is all hardened and I don't want to catch a chip to the jugular. Does this? It's close. Still got a little bit more to go, but I need to get all this mess out of here so I can see this a little bit better. So the next thing I want to do, I'm, I'm going to go through and just clean everything up so I just can really see what's good and what's bad and where I need to replace. I'm going to try out this Benchmark Abrasives Extra Coarse, Extra Coarse Purple Stripper Disc. I've never used this stuff, but it seems like a good opportunity to try it. Benchmark is what I use for all my stuff, my cutoff wheels, my grinder wheels, unless I'm running short and I got to run last minute to the tractor store or something. They just got good stuff.
looks pretty good obviously it's not paint prep perfect i just kind of went around on the edges of the rust to expose where i need to go with things but that was just that one wheel and there's still some left on it. i think it's a pretty slick little thing i'm gonna spend the rest of the evening making some marks here's one of the pieces we've got to work with and i cut all this metal off that truck as well so we've got that to work with as well but trying to get a little bit of a game plan so in the morning we can get right to work getting some stuff cut and try my hand at getting this stuff welded in place. Let's go ahead and pop this weather stripping. We're gonna have to get it out of the way or we're gonna melt it when we're cutting and welding. See down in here? Oh, oh yeah. Phil's probably been looking for that key for years. Well, here goes nothing. By the way, my new wireless mic should be in later this week, so hopefully We'll be back to some good quality audio in the upcoming videos. But I can't stop working on stuff just because my mic quit working. We'll push through. Weld this nut on top of that best we can. Then I'll pull that bolt out and we'll weld the inside up. That'll heat her up and also give something better to bite on. We may still end up breaking it, but either way, I got to get that out of the way. Whoops. Here's the weld that went down into the head of it. Just didn't get any decent penetration on it. Here's my plan. I tried to keep it as a whole piece so I can set it and get lined up on here and then trace it. This still isn't the best. It's got a lot of rust right here yet. And I don't know the best way to do this. I think it's gonna be cut it out, take what's good, and then piece that together. Maybe some of that. I don't know, man. We're just making this up. Oh, what a hoot. And we'll cut it bigger than what it needs to be. And then that way we can put it down in place and then trim it.
So I'm just gonna make some marks, like down here it looks pretty decent, but up here where that is, I'm just gonna make some marks, work my way around, and just kinda eyeball myself for a little tighter fit. You know, a fella's sitting here looking at this, and I might be overcomplicating things. For the scope of the project, what might be easier, instead of trying to make it right and make it tight, oh, I love watching some bad chat, but instead of trying to get things to butt up, I think what I'm gonna do is just get it somewhat close so there's not a crazy amount of overlap in place for rust to rust jack, but just let it overlap and then weld it like that. It gets us the solid floor we're after. I am gonna go ahead and just cut this off right here because this whole corner I'm not gonna use. Before I cut that off, we'll just have to piece this in with what we've got. This is just cool. I mean, I got no idea what I'm doing. Well, this is fun. All right. Let's turn this down. I don't think that looks terrible. I'm just gonna work my way around, spotting as we go so we don't heat it up too crazy much. Let's see what she looks like when she's done. Here's that for the first pass before the wire wheel. I'm confident. Oh, I can see them. There's going to be tons of pinholes in that. And I, it took me a little bit to figure out a technique that worked and that I liked. I think the cool thing is there was a rusted out hole here. Now there's less of a rusted out hole. Let's clean it up with the wire wheel and I'll go back around and get her touched up. Take it for now. Let's figure out this piece now. I think we can probably get that to work. Just about have that welded up, and all of a sudden the welder stopped feeding wire. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Here I am, bragging on this little Weber welder, little homeowner special, and all of a sudden the wire feed stops working. Unbelievable. Good news, it stopped working because we're out of wire. The devil good news, I need to pick that up. I've got wire. Let me get it reloaded and we'll keep going. One thing I have learned is to not take the paper off until I get it fed into the machine. Otherwise, the wire just springs off of the spool. Not near as many pinholes in that one right off the bat. I changed my technique just a little bit on that. Seemed to work better. First pass looks decent. Let's see if we can't cut it out of this and make those bins up on the fly, I suppose. I don't know, we'll figure it out. What's the worst that could happen? I think I'm just gonna start welding it and then uh, feed it into place. As long as there's not a hole there when we're done, I think we'll be okay. That didn't shape in too bad. This next one's gonna be kind of tricky. Got this bend here, we gotta get it to match that. I think what I'm gonna do is maybe get this side here welded in first 
and then beat to match. Some perfectionist that does this for a living is just just losing his mind right now, and that's okay. I'm, I'm kind of losing mine a little bit too, to be honest here. I think something like that. Definitely a quilt work of pieces here, but it's not looking terrible. The next thing I need to do is make one piece right here, but that's got a real tight bend in it. I think I got the perfect tool I bought probably seven months ago. Let's check our length first here. Make it a little longer than it needs to be and then we can trim it. How are you doing? Welcome to somebody's organizational nightmare. In a month's time, this place will be a completely new shop. Um, it's been nothing but storage, but things are getting ready to change. Anywho, I got this Harbor Freight break that I actually bought used off of the old face space. I'm gonna put her to the test. Would you look at that fine piece of craftsmanship? So I bent that long. We're probably going to trim a little bit off that, but it's easier to bend something when it's got a little length to it. But here's the idea. It's just going right there, like a so. And I'm going to make a mark, and we're going to cut a straight line all the way across, all the way across this and get that to go under it. Yeah. All through here is pretty straightforward. I got a little bit of a kink back here. What if I slid it in from the bottom, like I was talking about? And I could run that up like that. I think weld it in place like that. And we may just have to maybe do a little cutting and beating down on that end. We made a little bit of a process getting everything tied all the way down. So I got the first pass all the way down the bottom and the top. There's some pinholes and blow throughs we'll have to come back and touch up. But look at that. That's a solid floor. You can't get through the sucker anymore except for that corner and that corner. Well and there. There. We'll get there. 
let's get these corners tidied up how they need to be. I think this one, I can just push up from the bottom and get it where it needs to be. Let's just try a floor jack under here with a, a board on the end. There. That'll work. I think we might have to do more than a floor jack on this side, but we'll start with it and see where we go from there. I mean, I don't know. It kind of worked itself right into that bend pretty well. well let's weld it before it forgets I'm not supposed to know that. I mean, that fit her up in there pretty good. Don't, don't look too close at these. Wait, hold on. Not too shabby. I know there's a lot of people that could do a lot better, but I'm pretty happy with that. Still got a little bit more welding to do back here, but believe it or not, it gets to a point in the day where the sun gets low enough, and it gets a little too dark to see out of the welding hood. So I'm gonna put the welder up for now, but go ahead and start getting stuff cut out for the other side so we're prepped and ready for tomorrow. What I wanna work on is around the transmission tunnel or hole for where the shifter comes up through. This one's pretty rot all the way around, especially on this side. And this one that came out of the other truck isn't perfect all in this area, but right through here, which would be the driver's side, is pretty good. So we're gonna cut around that and take this whole thing. That gets us through most of the complex shapes anyway. And then we'll just have to cut this section out and patch that in. So I'm just, I'm looking at that rib there. Let's just cut, let's just start there and work our way around. Perfect, but definitely quite a bit better. So it is the following day, but full disclosure, it's almost noon. I went down and filmed the video, which will be the next video, for the world headquarters. So you guys get to see that soon. There's a bunch of stuff coming and I just kind of want to give you a quick rundown of everything that's coming up because I've had a ton of questions and honestly I haven't done the best job of explaining it. And then we'll jump into getting this thing welded in. The cool thing about what's coming up with the world headquarters is, well, you'll see, but after you watch that video, know that this building, everything that's inside is getting taken out. It's getting gutted minus the welding station and the chainsaw setup. And we're gonna convert this and add a door on this wall where I can work on some stuff in a nice heated shop this winter. It's not big, I can't get the whole truck inside, but components, we can work on this and get that fixed and get the radiator supports on that inside. I can rebuild cylinders for the Ford 555 inside. I can work on the heater components that were damaged and get those fixed up and do those inside. I can work on some smaller stuff inside a heated shop this winter, which is very exciting. So that is coming up. And as far as the YouTube yacht, one of the big reasons I got out of doing construction is I just hate framing this time of the year. I'm just not a big fan of it. So we probably won't be framing, even though revenue wise we're doing good and we've got the money to move forward on the project, we probably won't get back to framing until sometime in the spring when it warms up and it gets more favorable for me. I don't mind the cold when it comes to doing this kind of work, but I just don't like framing in the cold. The material just never seems to work with me. So there's your quick channel updates. There's the direction that everything is headed. It's a direction I never thought things would head and it's all because of you guys supporting the channel and watching, so I'm pretty excited about it. But the main project for the rest of this winter is the truck. We just have some distractions with the headquarters and getting that shop lined out the way I want it. But the main thing is this truck and getting it up and running and finished and ready to go.
So we got that in there, not bad. We still got that big patch on that side, and then we gotta get this to piece in. But most of it's in there, and I did make uh, reference marks all the way around where the old one was. Transfer them onto this one so that hopefully that's lined up where it needs to be. We'll find out at some point, won't we? Uh, the next thing I wanna do is we'll go ahead and get this piece slid in and weld it on. Not a real smart man, but you see some smoke started coming from out inside the grinder, and then this fell out. And, uh, well, I probably ought to unplug it. See, that's why I buy these nice name brand tools like this. That way stuff like this doesn't happen to a grinder that's less than six months old. You know, because that would be... This is where I'm leaving you on this for now. This little rig, that's the first time I've really used it for an extended amount of time. Not too bad for a little homeowner special. It can do MIG gas if you want. You can do TIG with it or just run the flux core because that's what I'm set up for right now. And uh, it does work best on the 220. We tried it on the 110 before and didn't have a whole lot of luck with it. But on the 220, she runs like a champ. I'm not too mad about the way this is looking at all. We still got some smaller things. We got to get this patched. We got to get a couple holes that patched. We got some work to do up in those areas. And we got to get this filled in and do a little work up there yet. But we're going to end up with a pretty good solid floor for some free material and a little bit of flux core wire. Like I said, next video is our new world headquarters. And then after that, we'll be getting this converted over to a little off-grid shop with some indoor workspace so they'll have those distractions but then back on this rig and we're going to push through it after that to try to get this thing finished up so we're ready to work this coming spring can't thank you guys enough for watching and i definitely definitely hope you tune in for the next one because i'm excited about it and i think it's going to be a big change for the channel in the long run that's going to be for the better i had an outro right there and it just you know so we'll just well that's that's it